Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two. I assume from the sort of fairly muted response that everyone had a good night last night. Now, it's standard to start day two with a joke about the evening event before recapping on some of the themes of yesterday. However, thanks to the activity on the conference app, I'm delighted to say that the first part of my job's been digitized. And whilst I cannot possibly compete with that fantastic introduction that we had from Peter and Clive yesterday, in the spirit of bring your robot to work, I haven't come alone. Alexa, ask conference, what were my key stats? There were 1,116 attendees on the 21st November. This is an increase of 120 attendees from 2016. Attendees came from 17 different industries in 42 different countries. And Alexa, what's my key news? Frequently used terms on the app were RPA, robots, digital, analytics, talent, and customer. Great. Job done. <laughs> OK, well, maybe not exactly. But isn't it amazing that for the cost of 50 euros, plus a couple of hours of a developer's time, I can get an Amazon Echo extracting data from a database and presenting it back to me in an interactive format. And if anyone hasn't been to the digital shed yet, the developer that did this for me is called Thomas, and he's in there, so do go and talk to him. So more on Alexa later. I'm just going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about some of the key trends from yesterday. And whilst we've got a lot of sexy technology at this event, and Clive, if you're listening, I am not talking about you, I'm actually going to start with the topic of custom orientation or customer service and customer value, because this was a really key, as key aspect that came through in the presentations from BP, from Unilever, from Tarmac, and many of the plenary sessions, and it had also made it into the center of Peter's levers of, of success. And this is key, because surely this is the reason why you're all here. And whilst this topic is nothing new, what feels different this year is just that we've got a lot better tools in our toolkit. Because let's face it, until really recently, if you had separated your transaction processing from your front-end customer services, if you got SLAs in place, if you were regularly getting feedback from your customers, you were doing a really good job. But actually, all of a sudden, receiving notification that you're the fourth caller in the queue or that you will get a response within 48 hours from a customer's perspective just doesn't seem that kind of up to date. And it's not surprising that this has come to the forefront. James Bruce yesterday talked about the fact that with the growth of digital businesses that you know, customers are expecting you know, more and more interactivity. You know, and we also know that customers' expectations of service is starting to transcend sectors. So they expect to be able to interact with their bank, their retailer, in the same way that they interact with an Airbnb. And why not with their shared services as well? And I think, actually, this presents a great opportunity for us because we are experts in that custom orientation. You know, once you start to add on the tools, I think this can be really powerful. And I am going to just touch a moment on the tools because, obviously, robotics was a really key theme that came through yesterday. I think the message is probably that if you're not already thinking about this or piloting it, you're starting to be behind the curve. But actually, the point of me employing this, um, my robotic co-chair here was really to make the point that in addition to automating your transaction processing, there's now a lot of tools that enable you to really support that interface and that interaction with the customer where it's appropriate to do so. This was obviously an overly simple demonstration. But we recently got an Alexa pulling data from Oracle for a customer. And you can easily imagine that with some of the chat box technology, that you could be three, four, five questions deep before a customer has to reach out to a customer services person, again, where it is appropriate to do so. And I think the other aspect is, you know, something that was talked about quite a lot by Unilever and also by Matthew from um, James, uh, sorry, Matthew from Standard Chartered. The final aspect of this is the kind of data and what can you do about all the data. You know, obviously, Matthew showed us images of his data and command center. But what if you don't have that scale? How do you get started on that journey to becoming a data 
data-driven, data-focused organization. Um, if I can just get the dashboard up here, what I've done here is take the same data that we gave Alexa access to, and I've programmed it into a visualization tool. This is actually Click, which has got a natural language generation um, aspect built into it. So you can see that what was originally quite a sort of boring um, Excel spreadsheet is now, first of all, quite visually interesting. And you can see that what the tool has done is generated some commentary automatically. So this hasn't been done by a human. What this tool also allows me to do is to kind of interrogate that data. So if we can click into Europe, you can see that that data will refresh, as will the commentary. And again, this was simple, but you can imagine that if you can replace that with some of the reports that you do with your customer, all of a sudden it puts the customer at the center of that. It gives them the ability to be able to interrogate the data. And I think this could be really powerful. Again, this took us about six hours, I think, to build this one. Now, for my final point, I just want to come back to the health warning. So whilst we like to talk about the fact that you, know, you can buy a robot pretty inexpensively, obviously, if you want to scale that up, it does require the infrastructure and investment in order to do that. I think the other aspect is that you do need your processes and your data to be good enough to start on this journey. I use the term good enough because I suspect for many of you, you're thinking, if I wait for them to be perfect, we'll never get started. And actually, if you set up these projects in the right way, you can use it as an opportunity to really understand where you need to focus your efforts. You also need the right talent to be in place. You, know, you might, might want to start thinking about investing in people that really understand data in the same way that a number of years ago, we invested in people who were continuous improvement experts. And I think also for you as leaders, you need to understand what it means to better support in the future businesses that are anyway becoming more digital, and also how you make that move to becoming a digital business services organization. And I'm going to finish on that point because actually I think these are some of the key topics that will be picked up today. Just before I introduce you to um, our next speaker, Alexa, ask conference, venue for next year's event. The 2018 conference will take place in Prague. There you go, breaking news, and you heard it from a robot. And Alexa, how many jokes from Peter? We have had two jokes from Peter plus sound bites, which I am struggling to classify as humor. Well, <laughs> to be fair, she's probably not the only one there. <laughs> 